Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Baltic Tricompax Chronograph. This watch will be available from BalticWatches.com on pre-order from the 1st to the 11th of December. The watch will be available in two versions. On the leather strap, the price will be €1,585. On the bracelet, the price will be €1,645 respectively. The watch will also be available in two dull colour options. The panda version you're looking at here, alternatively a reverse panda version. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in a watch box which is protected by this black cardboard outer box. One removes the lid, pulls down the flap and I'll show you the watch box itself. As you can see, nicely finished and we've got a hinged lid. There's also a drawer in the base, so one withdraws the drawer and I'll show you what it contains. As you can see, there's a foam panel in the top. One removes the foam protective panel. And inside we have three items. We've got a screwdriver for resizing the screw pin links in the bracelet. Also, this is unusual at this price point. One gets a time graph a printout of the performance of the movement used, which is the Solita SW510M. And you can see that the movement is well regulated. It's running consistently at plus seven seconds per day, which is very impressive. So one also gets the warranty card, as you can see, which is in this cardboard sleeve. Uh, nice attention to detail because the international warranty card is actually made from metal rather than using plastic or cardboard so good quality and there's a QR code you can scan to access the warranty. Now the watch comes with a two year international warranty which is very good. Usually this price point €1,645 one would expect a 12 month international warranty so to get a two year warranty is very impressive. Right so I'll show you the watch box as you can see hinge lid and the interior is finished to a high standard, fully upholstered with a velour fabric. There's also a foam protective panel to protect the watch in shipping. Signed on the interior of the lid with Baltic's logo, and the watch sits in the base on a padded pillow cushion, as one would expect. Also fully upholstered to a high standard with a velour fabric. So, nice presentation to the watch box, and also well thought out design with this shelf, uh, which houses the warranty card, the screwdriver, and also the time grapher printout, as you can see. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Baltic Tricompax Chronograph Panda version. We have a 39.5mm case diameter, we have a 47mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 13.5mm and a lug width of 20mm. The flat link bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to 16mm at the two button push clasp. As you can see, the two button push clasp is signed to high standard with Baltic's logo engraved. Flawless mirror polishing to the bevels and also the outer sections, and that complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel brass satin finishing to the centre section of the body. It really is a very well executed clasp, no sharp edges, no burrs, doesn't have sharp corners. Now, as always, I'm going to be critical of the clasp only having two micro adjustment holes. I would like to see Baltic enhance this clasp and add three or four micro adjustment holes by lengthening the clasp. I'll show you the interior. Good firm resistance to the two button push triggers. Solid mill 316L grade stainless steel interior. No sharp edges, no sharp corners to it. Beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing. Very well executed solid mill clasp. Snap shut with a nice positive click. And I think it's a very good looking clasp, also very low profile, wraps around the wrist very well. With regards to the bracelet, it is finished to perfection. Beautiful luster to the flat link bracelet. The links are very thin and that means they articulate very well. No loose uh, links, the screw pins are a good tight fit and it articulates very smoothly. The bracelet doesn't feel stiff, it doesn't kink, so it wraps around the wrist very smoothly. And also the end links are a good tight fit to the head of the piece. And we've also got female pivoted end links as you can see. And that means the end of the flat link brace, it articulates very well to give a nice snug fit underneath the lug tips. Good attention to detail because they've drilled holes in the lugs and that means one doesn't have difficulty removing the bracelet and fitting a strap. If it has standard spring bars, one can press a spring bar tool externally through the holes in the lugs. But to make it easier, they've also added 
quick release spring bars as you can see to the female pivoted end link so that means it's easy to remove the bracelet and put a strap on without using a spring bar tool so very well designed very well executed with regards to the rest of the specification we have a double dome sapphire crystal with AR coating and the anti-reflective coating on the underside does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices and also the silver mirror polished dolphin hands. The hands are correctly proportioned and the chronograph hand extends all the way to the minute ticks on the white ticks on the chapter ring and there are also Arabic numerals on the chapter ring for the chronograph so the handset is very nicely proportioned and the mirror polishing is very high grade. I also like the dolphin shape to the hands on the subdials, which contrasts very well. They are Gilliche finished subdials and white Arabic numerals and minute six and second six. So the subdials are very well executed. The Gilliche finishing is done to a very high standard, and the Gilliche subdials in black contrast very well with the matte white, white dial. So I really like the execution of the dial and also has the feature of Baltic watches, the 12 Arabic numerals at 12. Good orientation. The Panda dial is my personal favourite of the Panda and the Reverse Panda. I think it gives the piece a real vintage aesthetic. The Double Dome Sapphire Crystal is boxed or top hat style as you can see. And it's very impressive because this piece is only 13.5mm, which is very low profile for a chronograph with a boxed top hat crystal. So it's lower profile than one would expect. The aluminium bezel insert has a nice matte black finish to it. The Arabic numerals are very well printed, nice crisp printing to it. I like the matte finish of it. They've made the correct decision by using aluminium versus uh, ceramic or sapphire. Now, of course, aluminium is softer. It's not as scratch resistant as ceramic or sapphire, but however, it does give the tachymeter scale uh, a nice vintage aesthetic. The mirror polishing to the solid stainless steel bezel is done very well. Nice chamfer to the top edge, as you can see, which is mirror polished to perfection. And there's a nice undercut, which is brass satin finish. So I like the profile to it. Uh, it's very aesthetically pleasing and very low profile. No sharp edge to it due to the large mirror polished chamfer. So the quality of the bezel and also the aluminium bezel insert with tachymeter scale is done very well. Coin edge finished crown, which has a mirror polished domes cap with a ball sick B engraved to a high standard. Now it's a manual wind piece, it uses the Salita SW510M chronograph which is the manual wind version of the 510. So in the closed position one can manually wind the chronograph movements. So it's a push-pull crown providing 50 metres of hermetic seal. Let's test the push-pull crown execution. Absolutely silky smooth, it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind the Salita Calibre SW510M chronograph. One can feel the tension in the main spring gradually building up. So it feels very smooth to manually wind. And I think Baltic have made the correct decision by using the SW510M, which is the manual wind version, rather than using the SW510, which is the automatic version with a rotor, because it's more slender. So pulling it out to the first click position is the time setting position. Nice firm resistance to it. One can feel the resistance of the gearing. It feels like a good solid movement. No back play clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's an immediate response when one rotates the coin edge crown. The minute hand rotates instantly. No back play. Nice tight movement. Feels very smooth cycling through the hours. So it's an absolute pleasure to set the time. It does have hacking. Pushing it back in has got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test the chronograph complication. The top pusher activates the chronograph and the lower pusher will reset the chronograph with a flyback complication. Nice firm resistance, good positive click, it feels crisp. I like the firm spring loaded resistance of the top pusher. And as you can see the chronograph second hand begins to sweep around the, the dial very smoothly because it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. Pressing the top pusher has a nice firm click that stops the chronograph. Pressing the lower pusher activates the flyback complication and the chronograph hand fly ba flies back and resets bang on 12 o'clock. Perfect alignment and I like the smoothness of the sweep of the 4 hertz uh, frequency and also the flyback activates very well. So the chronograph complication works very well. The pushers are very well finished. Mirror polished domes cap to the pushers and 50 meters of hermetic seal so the pushes is perfectly acceptable. So I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel. 
engraved to high standard with the specification and the reference number and this one is engraved with Baltic as you can see to a high standard. Now understand the first 200 pieces of the Tricom packs will be numbered and rather than having Baltic engraved they will have the number 1 to 200 so that's something to note if you would like to purchase one of the first 200 yours will be engraved with a unique number. Very low profile and again that, this is the benefit of using the SW510M, the manual wind version, versus the SW510 which is the automatic. This doesn't have a rotor on the underside and it means that Baltic were able to reduce the profile of the case back. It doesn't have a bubble back case back. The case back is very flat. So very snug fit against the wrist, very comfortable, no sharp edges to it. The mirror polishing is done to perfection, the milled slots, no sharp edges to them, and the concentric CNC lathe tool machining to the centre section is also very aesthetically pleasing. So very low profile case spec, the kind of case spec one would expect with a quartz powered piece using a mecha quartz for example versus using a mechanical manual wind chronograph such as the 510M. Right, now I can't give you a wrist shot unfortunately because there aren't enough links in the H-Link bracelet. So we'll move on to doing a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see they have used BGW9 Super Loom Nova. So we've got loom dots on the applied indices and we also have fully loomed Dolphin hands. The Dolphin hands are correctly proportioned. One can clearly differentiate between the hour hand and the minute hand. So I think they've done a good job. This is clearly five to six layers of BGW9 applied to the Dolphin hands. However, I think there's room for improvement with regards to the applied indices. Yes, we do have loom dots, but I think they could inlay the applied indices with loom uh, with larger plots rather than just using dots because that would further enhance the performance. I appreciate the difficulty of using the silver applied indices with just loom dots. It doesn't allow for a large area of the dots to be applied and five to six layers on the dial. But as you can see on the indices the dots are fading faster than on the dolphin hands. So the performance on the dolphin hands is 10 out of 10. Um, but I think there is room for improvements on the applied indices. I think they should fully loom the indices rather than just using the loom dots. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. So as I've detailed, Baltic have made the correct decision by using the Salita SW510M versus using the SW510. So I'll give you the background to the SW510. The SW510 is based upon the architecture of the Valju 7750 chronograph, which is a reliable, well-proven workhorse chronograph. And I think they've made the correct decision by selecting the SW510M because it is thinner than the SW510 automatic. So to put this into perspective, the SW510 is 0.9 millimeters thicker than the manual wind version, the SW510M. Now the benefit of using the manual wind 510 version rather than the automatic is its lower profile. And as you can see, although this uses a boxed top hat double dome sapphire crystal, the thickness of this piece is only 13.5 millimeters. Had they used the 510 automatic, it would have increased the thickness of the movement by 0.9 millimeters and therefore increased this from 13.5 to circa 14.5, which would have made it top heavy for a 39.5 millimeter head of the piece. 13.5 is low profile for a chronograph with a box top hat crystal and it balances very well because it doesn't look or feel top heavy. 13.5 thick uh, by 39.5 diameter is very well proportioned. They've also made the correct decision by using the flat link bracelet which is very low profile and thin and the taper is correct for a 39.5 millimeter head of the piece. 20 tapering down to 16 is the industry standard and the correct taper for this piece. It's got the correct lug to lug measurement as well. 47 is very close to perfection. The perfect lug to lug measurement is 48, regardless of whether you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist or a 7 to 8 inch wrist respectively. At 47, it is very close to perfection. So back to the movement. The SW510M, the manual wind version, has been in use since 2018. So at this stage in 2022, it's been in service for four years. It's a reliable, well-proven Swiss-made 
chronograph movement. It has 23 joules, it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. It has a 63 hour power reserve which is very impressive and that's my favourite aspect of this piece. Now, although it is manual wind, one can't wear it and charge it automatically because it doesn't have a rotor. 63 hours is very impressive. It means that you don't have to manually wind it every day or even every other day because 63 hours means that you can manually wind it every third day. So it's very practical for a manual wind chronograph. You can manually wind it every three days to top it up to its maximum 63 hours. And the architecture being based on the Valju 7750 means it's very reliable, accurate, and also the build quality, quality control, and materials are all outstanding. This one has been very well regulated, as the time graph of printout proves. It's regulated to plus seven, which is very accurate. No negatives to the SW510M whatsoever. It's one of my personal favourite Salita chronograph movements. I like both the SW510 Automatic and the SW510M, the manual wind version used in this piece. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So on the leather strap, the price point will be €1,585. On the bracelet you're looking at here, the price will be €1,645 respectively. Same price for the Panda and the reverse Panda versions respectively. Yes, I consider it to be excellent quality, and yes, I consider it to be excellent value at €1,645. The specification, quality control, builds quality, and materials are all outstanding. This is a quality French-made piece with a quality Swiss-made Salita SW510M chronograph movement. No negatives to it whatsoever. The only enhancements I would like to see would be fully loom, the applied indices to improve the performance of the BGW9, and also I'd like to see the two-button push class lengthened to have three or four micro-adjustment holes to better allow for fine-tuning the length. Two micro-adjustments isn't enough although it does have small links in the flat link bracelet so therefore one could get the correct fit by using the H the flat link bracelet other than that it's an excellent piece I really like that it's only 13.5 millimeters thick the thing to notice it is only 125 grams with all the links in the flat link bracelet so for a 39.5 anything under 150 grams gives a nice feeling of wrist presence and heft, it, give, it feels quality without feeling top heavy or unbalanced and 20 to 16 means the flat link bracelet balances the 39.5 millimeter head of the piece well. So it's 125 grams on the bracelet, it feels very lightweight but it does have enough heft to feel quality. I really like the 63 hours of the SW510M and I think they've made the correct choice by using a Salita movement rather than using a cost cutting measure of a less expensive chronograph. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Baltic Tricompax chronograph. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.